we're going to find f of negative 4. We're going to find f at negative 4 for this function. So that just means substitute it, right? Is equal to. So we have a negative 4 cubed plus 8 times negative 4 squared. See why I said this, this paper was just, it wasn't going to be a very good paper, but negative 20. So negative 4 cubed, first of all, it's a negative raised to an odd degree, so it's going to be negative. And 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64, so we have negative 64. Negative 4 squared becomes positive, so that gives us 16 times 8. Anybody know what 16 times 8 is? So that's plus 128. And then negative 4 times 11 is negative 44. So, so this makes 64. Minus 44 is 20. Minus 20 more is 0. So based on what we learned last class, when you evaluate a function at a value of x, that is the value of the function at that x. So if I drew this at negative 4, there would be a 0. So what else, what is that telling us? If there's a 0 at negative 4, what is that telling us about the graph? And what is that telling us about negative 4? There's an intercept, uh, yeah, there's an intercept at x equals negative 4. Yes, there's an x-intercept at x equals negative 4. That also, when x equals negative 4, is the x-intercept, right? When we rewrite that as a factor, I'm sorry, go ahead. If we rewrite this as a, as a factor, then we have to add the 4 to the other side, right? So we get x plus 4 equals 0. So we know that this is a factor of our function, right? Because it's a 0 there. So we were, now we're going to prove this, what we just said, using synthetic division. So we have to list our coefficients, x cubed, x squared, x, and a constant. So they're all there, and they're all in order. So we have a 1, an 8, an 11, and a negative 20. Our factor is x plus 4, but we know that means x is equal to negative 4, which is what we put in the box. <coughs> What's the first step? Um, bring, down the first. bring down the first coefficient, which is 1. What's next? Uh, by four, so we multiply by negative 4, and we put it underneath the 8. And then what do we do? We add. So 8 plus negative 4 is 4. So we're adding here. Then what's the next step? So negative 4 times 4 here. And it goes under the 11. So that's negative 16. Then we add 11 plus negative 16 is negative 5. And then our last step is negative 20. So we multiply this. No, not negative 20. Negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. <coughs> then we add, and we get 0 for our remainder. So. Now, using synthetic division, x minus x plus 4, when x is equal to negative 4, x plus 4 is a factor. So we circle the yes. Now, if we want to write this polynomial, we know that x plus 4 is a factor. We started out on this row, we had x cubed. So our solution is an x squared. So this part is now x squared plus 4x minus 5.
this the our quotient this answer right here this row right here is our quotient it's one degree less than what we started with and you just fill everything in questions Zoe got this or do you have questions do you have questions I, okay. yes one Minus five came from right here. So we started, we, were, we had an x cubed. This first row is x cubed. And we divided it by an x. So our quotient is an x squared. So you just start with x squared and go down the list. So this is x squared 4x minus five. If I, let's see, that's going to factor into x minus five times, no, x plus five times x minus one, right? Won't this factor into x plus five times x minus one? Do you agree? So we could keep going here. So knowing that that's a factor, I could keep dividing this by either negative five or positive one and finish it out. But most of the time, if, unless you're struggling with factoring, most of the time when you get to a quadratic, if it will factor, you just factor it. If it doesn't factor because it's prime, then you just leave it there. Yes, I love it. So first you find the solution to the, then, then you divide it by the solution to get, uh, by the factor, mm -hmm. to get another factor like the rest? to get the rest of it, yes. What, what this, the purpose of this paper is to prove that when you get zero over here, you'll get a zero remainder over there. But what you said in terms of solving, which is what we're doing next, that's exactly what we're doing. We're in unit 1.2, right? Yes. Okay. Sorry, my computer just like, oh yeah, and one more question. Yes. If the quadratic is prime, does that mean there's only one, one x intercept that's rational? that's rational because it may have an irrational one or it may have complex ones. Are we doing all of the lab ones? All of those? We're, yes, we're doing all of these. So we just did the first one together. I want you to do the other three. Hooray. Copy this problem onto your paper and do the same thing that we just did. Evaluate it at F equal one then do the synthetic division and see if the answer you get on the left matches the remainder that you get on the right. I'm trying, let me get this. So, what did you notice about all of the equations where F evaluated at that point was equal to zero? They were roots of the, of the function, roots, factors, zeros of the function. So what generalization can you make when F evaluated at a number is equal to zero? X minus that number and factor? Yes. So you could make the generalization that X minus the number is a factor. Uh, no, just write it on your paper where you've been doing the work. In, in, write it in your notes. Which, if it's a factor, it also is a solution. It's also called a zero, and it's also an x-intercept. Yeah, the, this location. X minus C is the factor, C is a solution, F at C is a zero, and X equals C is the X-intercept. Okay. And so you got zero again, yes. Yes. So the, yes, so when these two match, and they should, mm -hmm. and that tells you that this is the, the x minus one is a factor of it. Yes, good, I'm glad, I, I like. 
when there's problems. <laughs> So this is the rational zero test and the definition of it. So you have P divided by Q, P is a factor of the constant term, and Q is a factor of the leading coefficient. We're looking at this problem and we're going to apply this formula. So our leading coefficient is a 1 and our constant term is a 1. So our leading coefficient right here is a 1 and our constant is a 1. So the rational zero test says that if there is a rational root, it must occur at P divided by Q. Well, P is plus or minus 1 because those are the factors. Q is plus or minus 1. So our only possibility here, if there is a rational root, is that it's at plus or minus 1. Now, in this case, we just graphed it here. And you can see that it is not crossing at either plus 1 or minus 1. There's no root there. That tells us that there is no rational 0. But we did that by plugging in the 1 and the negative 1, like what you were just doing, to evaluate them. So we used this function, x cubed plus x plus 1. We plugged in a 1 for all the x's. When we plug in positive 1, we get a 3, which is not equal to 0. When we plugged in negative 1, we got negative 1, which is not equal to 0. If neither of these are equal to 0, there is no rational root. It is crossing the x-axis, but it's crossing the x-axis at an irrational number. Do you remember what rational versus irrational is? It can be written as uh, the, 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 you know, P over Q or both are integers. Yes. Otherwise, it's irrational. It, it's like pi. It, it never ends. It can't be written accurately. As just, the fu as just a fraction. All right. So let's look at one that's not so simple as that one. So here's the function that we're looking at. We know that the, the constant term at the end, that's where we get our p, is the factors of p. p is 3, but we want all the factors of it. So the factors of it are all plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 1. I mean, it's prime, so those are the only factors, right? Then Q, all our factors of Q are plus or minus 2 or plus or minus 1. So P over Q then, and I know it's written there, but I want to walk you through it. P over Q is plus 3 over 2, right? So we have plus or minus 3 over plus or minus 2. That will give me plus 3 halves or minus 3 halves. Because plus 3 over plus 2 is plus 3 halves. Minus 3 over minus 2 is plus 3 halves. And minus one of them negative and one of them positive gives us a negative. So that gives us, gives us two choices, plus or minus 3 halves. Then we could have 1 over 2. So we could have plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 2. And then we could have 1 over 1. So we can have plus or minus 1, which is 1 over 1. So either positive 3 halves or negative 3 halves. Positive 1 half or negative 1 half. Or positive 1 or negative 1. If there is a rational zero, it's one of those five, six numbers. So we don't have to try everything in the world. We just have to try those six. And you can try that by substituting it in, or you can try it by synthetic division. Now, in this example, we've, they've used synthetic division, and they chose to try, posit, uh, they chose to try positive one to determine that it is a rational zero. But 
We could have tried any of the others. If you try positive one and it doesn't work, what do you need next? <coughs> you try minus one or any of the others, but you try another one, right? So you keep trying them until either none of them work or you find one that does. Now, this list is not too bad. There are only six. Sometimes you get a list and there are 15 of them or 20 of them. So you need to start using a little bit of educated guesses to try to narrow that down. But, but then we're also going to look at Descartes' rule of signs. Did we do that in Algebra 2 last year? Did we look at Descartes? Okay, I didn't think so, but I wasn't sure. That's another method to help you narrow it down a little bit. So that's one that we'll be looking at as well. But I don't think it's in today. So we just want to list all the rational zeros that are possible. So we want to talk about P over Q. So what are the factors of our constant? So three and one. So we have plus or minus three and plus or minus one. What are our factors of the leading coefficient? What's the leading coefficient? Uh, one. one. The leading coefficient is the one in front. Uh, it's the coefficient that's in front of the x with the highest degree, the highest power. That's the leading coefficient. So all of our choices here are going to be plus or minus 3 or plus or minus 1. Because 3 over 1 is 3, 1 over 1 is 1. Those are our choices. Yes. It scroll it scroll it up. Oh. That's what I thought I opened. Is that not what I opened? This says list all the oh this says state all the possible ones. All right, sorry. But didn't I click on the same thing you clicked? Oh, you're right. This one says homework. That one says practice. But I made the practice one the homework. I didn't give you the other one. All right. Hang on. So I don't have that one. <clears throat> Why don't I have that one? have had it because okay so P over Q what are all the possible factors of the constant which is six plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 2. So 1 and 6 and 3 and 2? Yes. Then what are all the possibilities for the leading coefficient? 1, negative 4, 2, negative 3, 2, negative 3. So because it's negative, you, you still have a combination. You wouldn't have plus 2 and plus 2. You would have plus 2 and minus 2. So, but it still comes out to be plus or minus 2. So now we have to reduce, we have to, we have to list out what all of these are. So plus or minus 6 over 4 is this, reduces to plus or minus 3 over 2, right? 6 over 4 is 3 over 2? 6 over 1 is plus or minus 6. 6 over 2 is plus or minus 3. Right? So we did 6 over 4, 6 over 1, 
and 6 over 2, plus or minus. That's where, that's where these came from. So then plus or minus 1 over 4, plus or minus 1 over 1, and plus or minus 1 over 2, Then plus or minus 3 over 4, plus or minus 3 over 1 we already have, and plus or minus 3 over 2 we've already listed. Are you following along? Yes. Okay. Wake up, Jocelyn. Jocelyn, wake up. All right. So now we have 2. So plus or minus 2 over 4 is plus or minus 1 half. So we have that already. Plus or minus 2 over 1, we don't have that, so plus or minus 2. And plus or minus 2 over 2 is the same thing as plus or minus 1. So those are all the possibilities. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 possibilities for, for rational zeros for this 1A, problem 1A. Can only be a maximum of three roots, right? There can only be a maximum of three roots, but they might not all be real. They might be complex, right? Yeah. So we don't have to solve this one, but do, you, but do you understand how this works? So you'd plug each of these into synthetic and then you would just plug them in and find Yeah, out. you would either plug them in and evaluate it at that number or you would plug them in for synthetic division and the, the value to plugging them in as synthetic division is that if they work, you've already divided it and you already have the quotient. Otherwise, you plug it in and see if it gets you a zero. And if it does, then you do the synthetic division so that you can continue to factor it. All right, so you can do C, well, I, we did A. You can do B, C, and D. I don't know if I can fit it in those little boxes, but we'll try. So we have P over Q, which is our P is all the factors of 8, and our Q is going to be all the factors of 2. So that's going to give me plus, so that's going to be 8. It's going to be 8 and 1 and 2, two, two and 4. See, I can't fit this into that little box. Over plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 1. And see, I shouldn't have done that there because now I can't. I'll get it to paste it back in. So we'll put it up there. So 8 over 2 is 4, 8 over 1 is 8, 1 over 2 is a half, 1 over 1 is 1, 2 over 2 is 1, 2 over 1 is 2, 4 over 2 is 2, which we already have, and 4 over 1 is 4, which we already have. So is that all of them then? So 4, 8, 1 half, 1 or 2. So at this point, we either need to substitute it in and see if we can get a 0, or we need to do synthetic division. If I just try 1, I get 2 minus 11, which is minus 9, plus 10. Minus 9 plus 10 is plus 1, plus 8. So it isn't positive 1. If we try negative 1, we have negative 2 minus 11, which is negative 13, minus 10, which is negative 23. So that one doesn't work. 
So I don't know that I can do the others in my head. So one plus and minus one are eliminated. Assuming I did it correctly in my head, plus or minus one are, are not it. If you do plus two, it'd be just eight times two is sixteen minus. So that one's out. So you're doing positive two. Yeah. So, so that's sixteen <coughs> minus forty four. Twenty. Twenty what? Oh, you're going on, plus 20, plus eight. I was thinking, what is 16 minus 44? Negative. Negative 28? I can't do that without. So it'd be zero. Um, yeah, plus two. So that one be zero? Plus so plus two works? Yeah. All right, so plus two gave us a zero, so we know that's a real solution. Why does this thing keep moving? So we know two works. Whoops, I don't want to use that pen. So we know plus two works. <coughs> Minus two is negative 16. Minus 22 is negative 38. Minus. 20, no, negative 2 doesn't work. All right, at this point, what I would do, we know one real solution. If we use synthetic division, then we can, that'll narrow it down. So let's do that. Let's do 2, negative 11, 10, and 8. We know that 2 works. So we bring down the 2. 2 times 2 is 4. We get negative 7, which is negative 14, which is negative 4, which is negative 8, which is 0. So now we have 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. So based, based on this, we now have 2x squared minus 7x minus 4, and you can't see that minus 4. So, and we know that negative 2 doesn't work. I'm thinking it's probably going to be a fraction. I think it's probably going to be a half. Which one? So the negative 1 half. <clears throat> so negative 1 half would have been what I was thinking next. So negative one half, negative half of two is negative one. So that gives us negative eight. Negative times a negative is positive four, and that gives us a zero. So now we have two x minus eight. So all of our factors are x minus two, x plus one half, and two x minus eight. And let me just tell you, we rarely ever write this one like this. We rarely ever write it like that. What we do is we take this 2 and we put it in front of the x. So we would have x minus 2 times 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 8. And those are our factors. Questions? Yes, but what happens to the 2? I think we would have to put it out front. Because otherwise, I think when we multiply it back together, our, our leading coefficient wouldn't be right. Although right now, it looks like it's going to be a 4 anyway. We can factor a 2 out of that, and it leaves us with x minus 4. Get 4x 
four x squared <coughs> plus minus six x minus sixteen. So, so now you need, yes, now you need to do this two more times. Well, we already have three rooms, so that's the maximum amount, right? Right. Yeah, so it's time for class to be over today. Okay. Um, I don't mean to take advantage of your pace time. Today is study hall, right? Yeah. Yesterday was drop everything and read. Today is study hall. But you do have an exit ticket for today that asks you some questions about this rash that asks you a question about this rational zero test. So so don't forget to do it. If you don't do it now, day five, right? Day five, yes then you need to do it before next class. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and I finished setting it up a few minutes ago. It's going to be on the Chromebook. And let me make sure. Do you mind if I go turn in money for a whole time? I do not mind. Will you be gone very long? Not really. So you can just take that pass. So if you log into course sites, then go to that tests and quizzes 1819 folder, then you should see the test is there. Oh. Mm. I do have some announcements to play for you though. volume is off. Is there supposed to be music? Are we supposed to be hearing anything? Okay, sorry. Let me start it again. States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible.